Hi everybody. Today we are going to watch an interesting topic on food preservation. What is food preservation? It is a process of treating and handling food in such a way to stop or slow down spoilage to prevent foodborne illness and extend their shelf life. Now let's see what are the principles of food preservation. First principle is prevention or delay of microbial decomposition which is achieved by keeping out microorganisms which is also known as asepsis by removal of microorganisms through filtration, centrifugation and trimming by hindering the growth and activity of microorganisms by low temperature, drying, anaerobic conditions or chemicals by killing the microorganisms by heat or by radiation the second principle is prevention or delay of self decomposition of food which is achieved by destruction or inactivation of food enzymes by blanching and the second one is prevention or delay of chemical reaction example prevention of oxidation by means of an antioxidant and the third principle is prevention of damage caused by insects animals mechanical causes etc let's see what are the methods of preservation food processing methods are used to preserve foods which include short term storage method which requires proper cooking of food to prevent spoilage long term storage requires one of the following method one is heat treatment low temperature drying chemical preservation and air radiation asepsis the word aseptic means free from microorganisms especially harmful bacteria and viruses this technique prevents contamination of food by spoilage agents thus it requires either an artificial covering for food or preserve its natural protective covering to avoid contamination examples of natural coverings are the shells of eggs fats or skins in animals and peel of fruits covering can prevent microorganisms from entering or dropping into the food removal or reduction of microorganisms microorganisms can be physically removed from food or their number can be reduced by the following methods filtration centrifugation washing trimming and sieving first method is filtration it is the only successful method for the complete removal of microorganisms and its use is limited to clear liquids the liquid is filtered through a previously sterilized bacterial proof filtered and liquid is forced by positive or negative pressure this method has been successfully employed in fruit juices beer soft drinks wine and water second one is centrifugation it is not a very effective method all microorganisms are not removed for example in the milk main purpose of centrifugation is not to remove bacteria but to take out the other suspended material third one is washing washing raw foods removes spoilage microorganisms example vegetables and fruits should be washed in a clean water sometimes washing food is dangerous if water adds spoilage organisms and increase the moisture so that growth of the spoilage organism is encouraged Fourth method is trimming. Spoiled portions of a food is removed by trimming. Large number of spoilage organisms are removed by this way. Example, trimming the outer leaves of cabbage heads is recommended for the manufacture of sock rot. And the last method in removal of microorganisms is sieving, which can be done by using sieve. The flour can be sieved to remove any unwanted contaminants. The next food preservation method is by high temperature. Heat is one of the oldest methods of destroying microorganisms in food processing and preservation. Food is rendered safe by the application of heat because most pathogenic microorganisms are comparatively heat sensitive. Most bacteria are killed at 82 to 93 degrees Celsius. Some of the methods of heat treatment used for food preservation include cooking or boiling. One of the example of heat treatment process is pasteurization. The process of pasteurization is named after French chemist Louis Pasteur 
who devised it in 1885. The objective of pasteurization are to destruct the majority of pathogenic and spoilage organisms in liquid food and to extend the shelf life of the food. Milk is pasteurized by heating at a high temperature of 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, whereas beer and wine are pasteurized by heating at about 60 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. The device used for pasteurization is pasteurizer. Milk, wine, beer and fruit juices are routinely pasteurized using this pasteurization technique. There are three types of pasteurization methods. First one is low temperature, long time. It requires temperature of about 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Second one is high temperature, short time. In this method, the food material heated at 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. And the third one is ultra high temperature process. It involves heating milk or cream at 138 to 150 degrees Celsius for 1 to 2 seconds and then packed in seed sterile container. Now let's see use of high temperatures. Both low temperature long time and high temperature short time destroys mycobacterium tuberculosis and other heat resistant non spore forming disease causing organisms such as coxella burnetti which causes Q fever found in milk. Ultra high temperature milk may be stored without refrigeration for 60 to 90 days. The next example in heat treatment is blanching. Branching means mild pre-cooking. It is a hot water or stream treatment of immersing raw food like vegetables and fruits. The temperature employed is 63 to 70 degrees Celsius for 2 to 3 minutes. This process is carried out before canning. The objective of the blanching is inactivation of enzymes in vegetables that promote degradation and chemical changes affecting especially texture and flavor. It also reduces the number of organisms present in food up to 99%. Next is canning. It is another example for heat treatment. Canning, the careful preparation of food packed into a sealed container that is subjected to defined high temperatures. The canning process was invented by Nicholas Appet of France in 1809. The process of canning is sometimes called sterilization. Canning is used to preserve a wide variety of foods including soups, sauces, fruits, vegetables, juices, meats, fish and some dairy products. The next method in long term storage is low temperature. Cold is not an effective means of destroying pathogenic bacteria in foods, but it can retard their multiplication and metabolic activities. The most important criteria for successful preservation through cold is that the food must be clean. Under 10 degrees Celsius, microbial growth is low. Frozen foods usually does not have any free water. Frozen foods also benefits from low water activity to help protect against microbial growth. Freezing may kill some but on not all microorganisms. But growth is slowed or stopped. Mechanical refrigeration was pioneered by American inventor John Gorey in 1842. Low temperature is widely used in food preservation methods like tool storage, refrigeration and freezing. Now let's see first method in low temperature is cool storage. Bulk storage of fruits and vegetables in cool environment created by air cooler or water sprayed. This method is widely practiced in major fruits and vegetables growing areas. Example bananas and tomatoes stored at 13 degrees Celsius to, do, to slow down ripening process. Second method is refrigeration. It is advantageous because it does not cause any chemical or physical changes to food. Refrigeration or chilling is used for storage of meats, fish, eggs, milk, some fruits and some vegetables at minus 2 to 10 degrees Celsius for few days to few weeks or months. Third method is freezing. Storage of frozen foods condition is important for food preservation. Freezing allows foods to be stored for longer period than refrigeration because it inhibits enzyme activity and microbial growth to a greater degree. Let's see what are the methods of freezing. 
First one is air freezing or sharp freezing. It is a cold air is blown across the food. In that there are two methods. One is slow air freezing and quick air freezing. In slow air freezing, the temperature employed is minus 15 to minus 23 degrees Celsius. The cold air is passed for three hours. And in quick freezing, the temperature employed is minus 18 to minus 34 degrees Celsius. And the cold air is passed for 30 minutes. Next method is indirect air freezing. In this, food has not come in contact with the refrigerant, but come in contact only with the cold surface, which is maintained at minus 18 to 45 degrees Celsius, example bakery goods, soups, etc. The third method is direct immersion freezing. In this, food is immersed in refrigerant as fish and brine, and food are also immersed in liquid nitrogen or sprayed with liquid nitrogen. We cannot store all the foods in freezing conditions. So, let's now see what are the suitable foods and unsuitable foods. In suitable foods, we can store fruits and vegetables, meat, poultry, fresh broth, raw and cooked, pastry and duff, baked foods and example bread, cakes, soups and sauces, cooked meats and in unsuitable foods, whole egg and shells, some vegetables, example lettuce, cucumber, peppers, some fruits, example bananas, melons, pears, mayonnaise and whipped cream, etc. The third method in long-term storage is drying. This is a dehydration process by which the moisture content of the food is removed or decreased. Pathogenic and other bacteria cannot multiply in the absence of water. Drying or evaporation methods are applied to nearly every kind of watery fruit including milk. The loss in vitamins and nutritional value is usually minor. There are three important methods in drying. First one is sun drying. Food dried naturally in the sunlight. Moisture content of the food is lower to 15% and stable for shorter period. Example, salted fish, meat and vegetables. Second method is mechanical dryers. Foods are exposed to a blast of hot air or drying by direct contact with the heated surface. Example, milks are dehydrated by this method. And the third one is freeze drying or slicalization. Moisture in the food is frozen without forming liquid and the process is called sublimation. Example, dried soup mix, strawberries and shrimps. This picture indicates the example for drying. So the meat is sliced which is hung in air to dry and it is processed. Fourth important method in long term storage is chemical preservation. Chemicals incorporated into food for preservation purpose are intentional additives. Additives used at food industry level includes vitamins, mold inhibitors, bactericides, emulsifiers, minerals, food coloring, sensory colors and sweeteners. There are several traditional ways of food preservation used at the household levels that can be classified as chemical methods. Substances such as sugar, salt, vinegar, spices and wood smokes are generally regarded as safe and natural preservatives. Preservatives are divided into two classes. Class 1. It includes those which can be added to any food generally on no, as on no limit basis. Example acetic acid, vinegar, dextrose, edible oil, honey, spices, common salt. Class 2 includes the following chemicals such as sodium, potassium and calcium salts, benzoic acid, lactic acid, propionic acid, nitrates, nitrites, sodium diacetate, sorbic acid, sulfur dioxide, sulfides and calcium phosphates. These are the various processes involved in chemical preservation. First one is salting, the addition of salt to food for the purpose of preservation. Second one is sugaring which is the action of sugar in food preservation. And the third one is smoking, one of the oldest methods used to improve the quality of food and commonly used to preserve meat and fish. These are all the methods of curing foods. Next, we'll see what are the different types of chemical preservatives and what are their uses and their application in food industries. First one is sodium benzoate. They are used to inhibit yeast and molds and which can be applied in food products. Second one is calcium propionate, which is inhibiting mold. 
and it is used for baked goods. And third one is sulfur dioxide, which is used for retain the color, and it is used in dehydrated foods. And the fourth one is sodium silicate, which is used to preserve egg. And fifth one is nizin, which inhibits gram-positive spore-forming bacteria. It is employed in canned foods, meat products, and antibiotics like chlorotetracycline, oxytetracycline, and chloramphenicols are used for prolong the storage life at chilling or higher temperature in meats. In sodium chloride and sugars, it is used to reduce the water activity and they are used in jellies and candies. Next one is sorbic acid, which inhibit yeast and molds, and it is used in cheese products, baked goods. And the last one is ethylene and propylene oxide, which is used as a sterilant for packaging material. It is mainly applied in dried fruits and cereals. Another important method in food preservation is irradiation. It is a process in which food products are exposed to a controlled amount of radiant energy to kill harmful bacteria, insects and parasites and prevent spoilage. Irradiation also delays ripening of fruits and vegetables. Irradiation involves minimal heating. It has a very little effect on the taste, texture and nutritive value of the food. There are many electromagnetic radiation used in food irradiation process. And the first one is ultraviolet radiation, which is the most widely used in food industries. The rays affect only the outer surface and they do not penetrate the microorganism inside the food. And next one is the ionizing radiations like X-rays, gamma rays, beta rays and cathode rays. These X-rays are electromagnetic waves and the gamma rays are like X-rays but emitted from byproduct of atomic fission. And the beta rays are streams of electrons emitted from radioactive material. Cathode rays are streams of electrons from the cathode of an evacuated we will see what are the methods of irradiation. First one is radiorization, which is equal to pasteurization. It extends the shelf life of a food product. Second method is radiorization, that is bactericidization, destruction of non spore forming non viral microorganisms. And the third method is rad apatization, complete sterilization, that is removing endospores and exotoxins produced by the Clostridium botulinum. Food irradiation procedures. Food is packed in containers and moved by a conveyor belt into a shield room. There the food containers is briefly exposed to a radiate energy source. For example, gamma rays or x-rays. These organisms die or are unable to reproduce. Then the irradiated foods are labeled. Milk, butter and fatty meat are not preserved by irradiation. And finally, you have to understand some basic things in food preservation. That is how a food is packed also influences its shelf life. It is important that foods are handled properly by the consumers at home. You have to check the use by or expiration date and follow storage or preparation instructions. I thank you all for your patience listening. Hope you have gained a good knowledge regarding food preservation. Thank you.